Picture this, a summer night in 1969. The world holds its breath, eyes glued to fuzzy television screens. We see two figures bouncing in slow motion on a dusty, alien world. Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin. Their names are etched into our collective memory. Pioneers on the grandest stage imaginable. The moon. It was a spectacle of human achievement, a testament to our boundless curiosity. We celebrated these astronauts as the heroes of an epic story. But every great story has a universe of characters working just off stage, unseen by the audience, whose quiet contributions made the impossible journey a reality. This is their story. This grand cosmic ballet was not choreographed by just a few famous faces. It was the result of a symphony conducted by thousands of minds working in harmony. Behind the celebrated astronauts and the mission controllers in their crisp white shirts, there were legions of engineers, mathematicians, technicians, and thinkers. They were the architects of dreams, the weavers of cosmic trajectories. They weren't seeking the spotlight. Their reward was the success of the mission itself. Think of the Apollo program as a colossal pyramid. At the very top, piercing the heavens are the astronauts. But what holds them up? A massive, sprawling base made of countless individual stones. Each stone represents a person, a contribution, a solved problem. From the people who designed the circuits to those who packed the food, every role was indispensable. Before our pockets held supercomputers, the word computer described a person, not a machine. At NASA, many of these human computers were brilliant African-American women. Figures like Katherine Johnson, Dorothy Vaughn, and Mary Jackson were the master mathematicians of the space race. They were the intellectual engines behind the scenes, performing the complex calculations that were essential for every single mission. Their minds were the original guidance systems, charting the paths that rockets would follow through the vast, unforgiving emptiness of space. They calculated launch windows, orbital trajectories, and emergency return paths with nothing more than their intellect, pencils, and paper. Imagine the immense pressure. A tiny error in their calculations could mean the difference between a triumphant return and a tragedy lost among the stars. Katherine Johnson's work was so trusted, so vital, that when NASA first started using electronic computers for the Friendship 7 mission, Astronaut John Glenn refused to fly unless she personally verified the machine's orbital calculations. He famously said, get the girl to check the numbers. That girl was a genius whose mathematical prowess ensured the safety of America's first man in orbit. Her brain was the final most reliable checkpoint before a human being was launched into the cosmos. These women faced a double barrier, the color of their skin and their gender. They worked in a segregated facility in a world that often questioned their very right to be in such a high-stakes intellectual environment. Yet their brilliance could not be contained or denied. Dorothy Vaughn, seeing that the future was in machine programming, taught herself and her staff the Fortran programming language. She became an expert in the new electronic computers, ensuring that her team of West Area computers remained essential to NASA's mission. She saw the future coming and prepared her team to be a part of it a true leader and visionary. Without these women, the story of the moon landing might have been very different. The timeline could have been delayed by years, or worse, the missions could have failed catastrophically. Their meticulous work formed the invisible scaffolding that supported the entire Apollo program. They plotted the course for humanity's leap into the solar system, proving that a hero doesn't need a spacesuit or a pilot's license. When you think of a spacesuit, you probably imagine a marvel of engineering, a fusion of metal and advanced polymers, and you'd be right. But what if I told you that the life-saving Apollo spacesuits were hand-sewn piece by piece by a team of expert seamstresses? The lead for this incredible team was a woman named Eleanor Ellie Foraker. She and her colleagues worked for ILC Dover, a company that usually made bras and girdles. They applied their mastery of fabric and stitching to create the most important outfits ever made. These weren't just clothes. They were personalized spacecraft designed to protect an astronaut from the vacuum of space. The challenge was immense. Each spacesuit, known as the A7L, was made of 21 layers of gossamer-thin material, including nylon, Nomex, and Teflon-coated beta cloth. Every single stitch had to be perfect. A misplaced needle, a slightly crooked seam, 
Any tiny flaw could lead to a catastrophic leak spelling doom for the astronaut inside. The seamstresses worked with incredible precision, their hands guiding the fabric with a skill born from years of experience. They were artisans of the highest order, their sewing machines the tools that would keep men alive on the moon. It was a delicate dance of needle and thread with human life hanging in the balance. There's a fascinating story that highlights their critical role. During development, a prototype suit failed a pressure test, bursting at the seams. Ellie Foraker and her team were called in to diagnose the problem. They examined the suit with the focused eyes of master craftswomen and quickly identified the flaw. The engineers had designed a seam that was too weak. Ellie proposed a different stitching technique, a stronger, more resilient method she knew from her years of experience. The engineers were skeptical at first, but her solution worked perfectly. A seamstress had just solved an engineering problem that stumped the so-called experts. Without Ellie Foraker and her team of nimble-fingered artisans, the iconic image of an astronaut on the moon might never have happened. The astronauts needed suits that were both incredibly durable and flexible enough to allow them to work on the lunar surface. It was the skill of these seamstresses that made this possible. They stitched together the barrier that separated life from the void, ensuring that the men inside could walk, collect rocks, and plant a flag. They proved that sometimes, the most advanced technology relies on the oldest and most trusted of human skills. Their handiwork is now on display in museums, a silent tribute to their life-saving craft. The Saturn V rocket was the most powerful machine ever built by humans. It stood taller than a 36-story building and generated enough power to launch the entire Apollo spacecraft toward the moon. At its heart were the F-1 engines, five of them clustered at the base, each one a masterpiece of controlled fury. But in the early days, these engines had a terrifying problem. They kept exploding during tests. They suffered from something called combustion instability, a phenomenon where violent vibrations would tear the engine apart in just a fraction of a second. The top engineers at NASA were stumped. And honestly, the entire Apollo program was at risk of being grounded. The problem was so complex that it seemed unsolvable. The team tried everything they could think of, running countless tests and simulations, but the engines continued to fail. The project was falling behind schedule, and the dream of landing on the moon before the end of the decade was fading. It was a moment of crisis, a technical wall that threatened to halt the entire endeavor. The brightest minds in rocketry were staring at a problem that just defied their understanding. The immense power needed to leave Earth's gravity was proving too wild to tame. Enter a man you've probably never heard of, a self-taught engineer and acoustics expert named Sonny Morea. He wasn't one of the top-level managers, but he had a brilliant, unconventional idea. He suggested putting baffles inside the engine's injector plate, basically metal dividers like those in an ice cube tray. His theory was that these baffles would break up the destructive pressure waves before they could build up and destroy the engine. It was an elegant, almost simple solution to a devastatingly complex problem. The team implemented his design, and in the very next test, the F1 engine burned with perfect, stable power. This story is often told with a whimsical twist, sometimes involving a janitor who offhandedly suggested the solution, inspired by the baffles in a water pipe. While the true story points to an insightful engineer, the legend of the janitor carries a powerful message. It reminds us that good ideas can come from anywhere, from anyone, regardless of their title or position. It really highlights the importance of listening to every voice in the room. Sonny Morea's insight, or the wisdom of the proverbial janitor, saved the Saturn V rocket and, with it, the Apollo program. It was a quiet moment of genius that enabled the thunderous roar that would eventually propel humanity to the moon. On July 20th, 1969, as Neil Armstrong uttered his immortal words, that's one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind, he was speaking for everyone who had made that moment possible. That single step was the culmination of a million smaller, silent leaps of faith, ingenuity, and hard work. It was the final, visible result of a chain of human effort that stretched back for years and involved over 400,000 people. Each person in that chain was a vital link. From the geologists who trained the astronauts to identify lunar rocks, to the technicians who meticulously checked every wire and switch, 
their contributions were woven into the fabric of success. Consider the people in Mission Control. We remember Gene Kranz and his famous declaration, failure is not an option. But his team was made up of dozens of young engineers, many in their 20s, each responsible for a specific system on the spacecraft. There was the guidance officer who monitored the navigation computer, the flight dynamics officer who tracked the trajectory, and the retrofire officer, responsible for the burn that would bring the crew home. During the tense final minutes of the lunar landing, it was a 26-year-old guidance officer named Steve Bales who made the critical go call when the landing computer was overloaded with data, trusting his training and judgment under unimaginable pressure. What if these hidden heroes hadn't been there? Without Katherine Johnson's calculations, John Glenn might not have flown with the same confidence, altering the early momentum of the space program. Without the seamstress's perfect stitches, a spacesuit could have failed, leading to a tragedy that would have halted lunar exploration indefinitely. Without the solution to the F-1 engine's instability, the Saturn V might never have flown, leaving the moon an unreachable dream. The success of Apollo 11 was not a foregone conclusion. It was a victory earned through the collective effort of a vast and diverse army of thinkers and doers. The astronauts were the courageous explorers who journeyed into the unknown, but they were carried there on the shoulders of giants, hundreds of thousands of them. Their names may not be famous, but their legacy is as vast as the cosmos they helped us reach. Their silent leaps of brilliance, dedication, and courage are what truly propelled humanity forward, turning a science fiction fantasy into a historical fact that continues to inspire us today. The moon landing changed our world forever. It didn't just give us a new celestial body to look at in the night sky. It gave us a new perspective on our own planet. The famous Earthrise photograph, taken during the Apollo 8 mission, showed our world as a fragile, beautiful blue marble suspended in the blackness of space. It was a moment of profound revelation, a picture that united humanity by showing us our shared home. This new perspective, this sense of cosmic community, was perhaps the greatest gift of the Apollo program, a gift delivered by its thousands of unsung participants. The legacy of these hidden heroes lives on. The technologies developed for the Apollo program have filtered down into our everyday lives. From memory foam and cordless tools to water purification systems and medical imaging. The mathematical and programming techniques pioneered by figures like Katherine Johnson and Dorothy Vaughn laid the groundwork for the digital revolution that defines our modern world. The spirit of collaboration and relentless problem solving that characterized the space program became a blueprint for tackling other great challenges here on Earth. The story of the moon landing is more than a tale of astronauts and rockets. It is a powerful reminder that every contribution matters. You don't have to be the one taking the giant leap to be a hero. You can be the one who checks the numbers, who sews the seam, who offers a brilliant idea in a meeting, or who simply does your job with dedication and excellence. Every role has the potential to be a mission-critical one. The universe is a vast and complex place, and our journey through it requires all of us working together, playing our part in the grand cosmic story. So, the next time you look up at the moon, don't just think of the two men who walked there. Think of the 400,000 people who helped send them. See yourself in their story. Recognize that you, too, have a unique part to play in the great adventures of our time, whether they are in science, art, community, or your own family. You have the power to be a hidden hero, to make the silent leaps that push the world forward. Because in the grand tapestry of human history, Every thread, no matter how small or unseen, is essential to creating the final beautiful picture.